Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück zu The Stanley Parable. Wir sind wieder hier und wir sollen zum Konferenzzimmer gehen. Das machen wir nicht. Gehen wir da hin? Wir können in keines dieser Büros rein, ne? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Genau. Hier geht's ja nur zum Pausen rum. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Ich dachte, ich könnte mir einen Kaffee holen, Mann. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <lacht> ja, bestimmt. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <lacht> Was denn für eine Nachricht? Verstehe ich gar nicht. Dass ich weitergehen soll vielleicht? Ich glaube, ich soll wirklich weitergehen. Aber ich will noch nicht. Ich will erst ein kaltes Getränk. Kann ich mich ducken? Nee. Okay. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Erste Tür, die da. Nein. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Nicht runterspringen, ja? Dann, stirf, dann stirbst du, ja? Das wird für seinen Tod führen. Und die Strafe fürs Runterspringen, ja, sind 5000. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Wir sollen nicht hier runterspringen, ne? But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform <laughs> and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Da 
habe ich nicht gerechnet. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <lacht> When Stanley came to a set of two open, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nein, wir werden es wieder nicht tun. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <lacht> okay, diesmal springe ich nicht runter. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Okay. Wo war ich hin? Ach, einen schlechten Start. <lacht> That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Uh. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Okay. <laughs> This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Drücke 8 auf deiner Tastatur. Nein, möchte ich nicht. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Ich kann nicht alles, also ich drücke jetzt einfach die Tasten, die sie einfach geben. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now. He's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Das ist But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. 
first, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. <laughs> so he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. <laughs> it was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. Um. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Ich drück ihn. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... <laughs> Okay, wir sind jetzt den Anweisungen auf dem Bildschirm gefolgt. Mit den Knöpfen. Und dann kam bitte Stirb und bam, weg. Okay. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room and from then on he would never be alone ever again. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track.
coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job all I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. 
Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Um. <laughs> Wie durch ist das Spiel denn bitte? Ich klinge ein Telefon. Wo? wo? Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. Um. Erzählerstimme? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What is los? Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer that coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Wir haben es geschafft, ihn jetzt zweimal zu killen, ne? Nee, wir folgen mal dem hier. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. <laughs> Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. <laughs> oh, schön, eh? <laughs> Erzähler ist angepisst, wenn man ihn nicht aussprechen lässt. Das finde ich gut. Das finde ich echt gut. La 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 la. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Nö. 
Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Dann das the door behind mal. him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. He reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Nein! Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Könnt ihr vorlesen? Dann ist Computer. Wie krank ist das Spiel? Sounds. Ach, ich kann die Außen anschalten. Toll. Kann wir mal die Außen. Strom sparen und so. Ja. Ist denn das Computer auch noch hin? Dann machen wir den nämlich auch aus. Da kann man nichts machen. Wir können nach links und nach rechts gehen. Wir gehen dann noch mal schnell nach rechts. Ich will bloß gucken. Der Erzähler sagt gar nichts mehr. Ich glaube, der ist uns böse. Ah, cool. Das ist ein bisschen wie so ein... Ja, wie so ein Museum, ne? I don't know how 
How about they're throwing a surprise party for him, for all his button pushing? Does that sound plausible to you? <laughs> cool. Wie cool das einfach gemacht ist. Also wir haben Stanley jetzt echt ne ja mehrfach getötet. Ich muss das jetzt natürlich alles an hier, soweit wir das... Okay. Ähm. Wir schauen uns das einmal kurz an. Ich glaube, in dem Spiel gibt es so viel Geheimnis zu entdecken und so viel verschiedene Dinge, die man tun kann. Da werden wir nie fertig, glaube ich. <lacht> Aber hey, wir haben ihn immerhin schon mal gekillt, ja? Und wir sind in die Freiheit gekommen. Wie lange geht denn das? Das dauert mir zu lang. Ich rum. Das ist schon echt cool gemacht jetzt hier gerade. Ich glaube, wir haben uns verlaufen, aber hey. Der kann ja aber auch nicht raus. Ach ja, hier waren wir ja schon. Gut, dann gehen wir jetzt wieder hoch. Hm. Das 
than this office. Ich finde das gerade echt cool gemacht, einfach nur. Und wer das lesen möchte, ganz in Ruhe, der kann da kurz Pause machen. So, hier waren wir schon. Und da ist der Exit. <lacht> Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Mm. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. You push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. Nix mit beenden und so, ja. Äh. Ihr seht genauso viel wie ich im Übrigen gerade. Ähm. Wir haben ihn jetzt da quetschen lassen. Äh. Und jetzt haben wir Schwarzbild. Ähm. Hallo? Bleibt das jetzt einfach schwarz? Ich dachte jetzt eigentlich, er würde in seinem Büro wieder aufwachen. Aber gut, ähm, wir sind eh schon über Länge. Ich wollte halt nur dieses... Also ich wollte es einfach noch probieren. Ich dachte nicht, dass das jetzt noch so lange dauert und dass wir in diesen weißen Raum da kommen. Was ich echt cool. Also feiere ich echt großartig gemacht. Ja, Standing Parable. Interessantes Spiel. Wirklich interessant. Und wir haben ja nur, wir haben ja wirklich jetzt nur einen minimalen Bruchteil gesehen von dem, was, äh, was da eigentlich noch passieren kann. Also ich glaube, wir, wir haben ganz, ganz viel, was wir noch nicht gesehen haben. Und ich glaube, hier passiert tatsächlich jetzt gerade nichts mehr. Deswegen, ich werde das Spiel jetzt beenden. Und ähm, ich bedanke mich auf jeden Fall bei euch fürs Zuschauen. Mal gucken, wenn ich jetzt so die Tage auch nochmal Bock habe, werde ich vielleicht nochmal reinschauen, werde irgendwas anders probieren. Ja, also vielleicht die rechte Tür nehmen und dann dem Erzähler folgen. Ja, also das Spiel ist total durch. Krass, gefällt mir gut. Ich mag auch die Erzählerstimme sehr gerne. Ich bedanke mich auf jeden Fall bei euch fürs Zuschauen. Ich drücke mal ähm, zurück zum Menü. Ja, dann sind wir zurück beim Menü. Vielen Dank, macht's gut. Ciao.